as far as, I believe there's like 13 black billionaires in, in America. You're one of them. It's almost an impossible feat to accomplish. Wait, hold on, wait. There's no claps for that? That should be standing to your no, feet. No, no, it's a no, black no, no, billionaire. You kidding me? No, 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 Everybody no, no, no. should be up. No, no. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know where he's from? <laughs> New York. Yo, we can never, we can never normalize uh, being a billionaire. Not an everyday man. thing, man. By the way, we know almost all of them. Yeah. Also true. That's a fact. We'll have we'll have another one tomorrow. That's a yeah. Fact. Finesse two, is two only. Claps. <laughs> yeah. I wanna I wanna be careful with that, y'all. When they talk about us having money and y'all look at us, it's it's truly an illusion of inclusion. Well talk like, about I can't, that. I can't play a part of the illusion of inclusion. So you looking here at me like I'm totally included. No. I'm fighting for the same thing I was fighting for when I got into the game, but it's at another level. And so, and so it's very important to understand this is the truth. Out of all the billionaires in the world, the world got almost 9 billion people in it. There's only 16 black billionaires. So that's the illusion. So every time, you know, yeah, it feels good for one of us to get in, two to get in, but we, but, but we got to stop taking the crumbs. It's time for way more of us out of a nine billion. I want two billion to be billionaires. I don't want nothing less for myself or that, my people. That's why I was going to ask you as far as being such in, in rare space. What is, how does, who do you talk to? Like, I know obviously it's you and Jay, a few other people, but what's, very few people can relate to the challenges, to the struggles, to the financial difficulties, different things of that nature that happen at, at that level. Somebody said something that was very interesting to us one time. We was talking about a person that's extremely successful and his, his, his former friend. And they like, well, you never think about the winner's perspective. Everybody always sympathizes with the loser, but what about the winner? What about things that he has to go through, the trauma that he has? So what is that for you, knowing that you're one of 12 people in America, like who do you talk to? How's that social circle? How is it being in that environment? What are some of the challenges? Like how does that actually look for you? I mean, it's definitely lonely. It's not a lot of people to talk to. I mean, I, I talk to Jay or some other friends, um, but it's, I mean, when I look at it, I, I just know the truth that it's not enough wealth being spread around. You know, and so I'm at this point and that's what energizes me. I don't, I don't really look at it, you know, as far as like, okay, I'm a billionaire. I'm more like my, you know, my people are not doing good. Yes, I, I'm blessed to be a billionaire, but at the same time, you know, if my people aren't doing good, then I can't be settled. Well, Cause it's, we, we met, we talked to Nas and he was saying like, you know, he's been doing a lot of venture capital investing and he's been killing it. And I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, the higher up he moves, the more discouraged he gets. Yeah. Because the, he's, he's into different circles now and he's aware of information. He's realizing how much money is out there and how little money we have where he didn't really fully understand that before. So it's, it's an interesting paradigm, right? The higher up you move, the more discouraged you get because yeah. you're seeing it from a different perspective. Like you're seeing it from the mountain as yeah. opposed to seeing it from the street. Yeah, yeah. So just sitting here, uh, this is 30 years of experience of seeing at things at a level that you know most people haven't seen it at and so it's important that I, I tell people the truth that's why i say like the time is now no one is coming to save us because i'm at that mountain and i'm seeing the oppression that's still at that level and because they put us in the media like we're doing so good y'all don't feel that that level of 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 the stoppage of creating wealth so when it gets, when it gets up to that point and we talk about generational wealth, we're fighting just to get like normal wealth, but we're so, so caught up in like, okay, a billionaire or this or that, that we're not understanding that once you get to that level, there's even more, there's even more obstacles that are ahead of you. 
to, to kind of say my, my experience in that is, I, I want to tell you about this, this story about me running the marathon. So I decided to run the marathon, and I decided like six weeks before the marathon. Yeah, I was crazy. Um, usually got to train eight months. I only ran like 10 days before, you know, I was partying the days before. <laughs> and on the 10th mile, I hit a wall and I felt like I was literally going to die and I wanted to stop. I hit that level. I hit that ceiling in business, but I had to keep going. So I'm in pain. I'm struggling, but I had to keep going. And that's kind of a metaphor, you know, for my life and for everybody who is in here that's on the road of being an entrepreneur. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You're going to hit these obstacles and there's different levels, there's different miles, there's different levels of intensity. And so I was able to make it and finish the marathon. And I was able to kind of take that with me and apply it to business. And so, you know, at this point, you know, in the position that I'm in, I had to really look at like, what does, you know, the next half of my life look like? And I had to really, really, really look at what I wanted to do and, and make sure that I finished this marathon the right way. Because cause me just completing the race, that ain't what I want to do. I want to win the race. I want to win the race. I want us to win the race. Yeah, it's interesting. So it's 30 years of business for you. Yeah. It's 50 years of hip hop. When we met, you looked at us and you said, I love y'all brothers because what y'all been able to do, we've never been able to do in hip hop. And that's make it cool to be educated. So when I wonder, when you look at the landscape from your perspective, right, because you are at a different level, do you feel encouraged about this movement of financial power, financial literacy, financial education that you're seeing? I mean, I love what you guys are doing. I love what you guys are doing. Um, the beauty about everybody here is they, they took that step. Everybody here, y'all took that step. Y'all took accountability to come here and learn. Give yourselves a round of applause. Nobody, nobody's hiding the knowledge. There's not like no secret conspiracy that they're hiding the knowledge. You have to make a decision that you want to be financially literate. You have to make that decision. And so, you know, um, seeing you guys be successful, being able to support y'all, and seeing so many come out, people come out and changing the narrative to the importance of being financially literate is something that I got to honestly say you guys are responsible for. You guys are responsible for that shift. So I applaud you on that. Thank you. I, w I, w I, I wanna. Can, can I circle back to something though? Because I wanna make sure I give you the true answer. So he's talking about levels, and I kind of just got it right now, even though the levels and the marathon, it goes together. Um, but there's a level that you, you get to, and you're successful, and you get to the point of being successful, and as a black person, there's this thing that kicks in. There's this jealousy that kicks in. There's this fear that kicks in. Then they start to burn things down. Then they start to take the money out the Freedom Bank. Then they go back on the 40 acres and the mule. Then we don't deserve our worth. So even, even whole Jay, None of us are immune to it. He had to sue Bacardi to get his worth. Like they, they, they make us at the next level. You think that you've overcome everything. Oh, I finally made it. And then there's a whole nother army up there that is there to try to push you down the hill. And that's why from being at the mountaintop, I could come back down and tell y'all the only way out of this is if we can unify and combine our forces because what's waiting for you up there
Yo, that's that's um that's pretty insightful. That's actually ill. That's like a metaphor of like you seeing the opposition on the other side <laughs> and you like reporting back, like yes, yes. I'm letting you know what's yes. happening. Like you can't see it, but I'm actually seeing it. So to the ground troops, we gotta, you know what I'm saying? Like this is actually crazy. That's 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 pretty dope that so, you said so, that. 